Okay, so now uh, course management in Canvas. Um, uh, um, so one of the things that I really love, I think I mentioned this earlier, is like when I was thinking about designing this, I was thinking I would have to grab tools from all over the sort of you know, universe and, and say like, okay, like go to Google for this, go to Twitter for that, go to you know these different places. And, and so Canvas does really sort of pull it all together, you know, the video conferencing, the assignment submission, the chat, the peer comments. You know, I was thinking about using separate uh, you know, uh, technology for, for all mm -hmm. these and being able to have that all in one place, I think makes it much less confusing for students. Um, uh, the one, uh, one of the other sort of course management issues that, that I have is, you know, currently I would love to bring in guest lectures. Um, and I think I have to like sponsor them through OIT to get them a net ID and this, uh, it's just like, I just haven't done it yet. Um, because it's too cumbersome, but it'd be nice to just be able to give, like, send an email to a colleague, give them a link, they log in, and they can join our mm. panel, for example. Okay, so I think Sharon's saying she already talked about this. Yeah, I did. Yeah, so. This is something, this, this feature of cloning a course, it's, I, mean, I wish it existed for assignments the way Sharon was talking about because for, for, my, for my assignments I tend to choose the same options and I haven't figured out a way to have those same options like get repeated the next time I make the assignment. So I'll, I'll say something like let them see their response, let them have unlimited attempts, these are for the essay type math questions. And sometimes, like when I'll be doing it fast, I'll forget one of those, and they'll see my comments, and I'll say something like, um, "Explain what A is," but I forgot to check a box, so they can't can't see their original assignment. And so the there's also a feature where I can clone a course from a previous quarter, and that's something where I haven't decided if if I like it that way or not. I, I do it that way sort of so that like I know that the fonts and the indentation and that sort of thing all show up the same. But then uh, other features I have to go through and sort of manually delete a bunch of files yeah. or I have to manually go through and decide what I want to copy and what I don't. So it's, yeah, I am I am neither pro nor con of this cloning feature, <laughs> but it exists and I, I usually use it and then like tell myself maybe next time I will just start from scratch. So I learned how to use this better this quarter. I didn't realize before because I have courses that are similar and I'm using um, or two different sections and I'm creating the same assignment and I thought I had to do that from scratch. But really, uh, you can go into import content into this course <coughs> and then there's an option to select specific content. And when I first tried that, um, I would say click on, then you can go click under quizzes or assignments. And uh, initially I thought that when I clicked under assignments that that was it and I had to import all of the assignments and that happened. Um, but that's not necessarily what you have to do. Then you can, uh, there's a drop down box and you can select specific assignments that you want to copy and add to that course. Um, when I made my mistakes and selected all of the assignments, I was terrified that they'd be somehow just mixed in with all of the assignments for the other course, and I'd have to try to weed them out. But really, they're nicely organized into an imported content uh, area. So at the very bottom of your assignments or whatnot, you'll see the content you imported. Then you can weed things out if you accidentally copied all of the quizzes, for example. So that's actually, that's a really helpful feature. Um, as long as you're aware to change the dates, yeah. change the due dates. Um, there's a way to set them at the beginning of the quarter if you copy a Canvas course, but they don't always work out perfectly the way you'd like, especially if there's vacations and such. So that's something I have to keep my TAs up on, like make sure, go double check. Are the due dates correct? Are the due times correct? Like how it's the time limit for these quizzes or certain things like check boxes I'm learning to hit to make sure it's streamlined. But if it's not, the kids will let you know. <laughs> you, will, you will hear about it. Uh, one course I'm teaching now is called 21st Century Literacies, where we're talking about this use of technology in the classroom and how it has changed. And so it's a great canvas. Our use of canvas is a really excellent metaphor for that class. So I'm very open about the problems that I run into, and I use it as a learning tool. Like, look, 
yeah, we're transitioning to more um, automated and technological platforms for education. These are some of the problems that are coming up. You're experiencing them. Here's how I'm dealing with them. This is just something that we're going to have to navigate together. It's part of it. And these are some of the tools we're learning to develop. How can we streamline these things? And just to be aware that this is a living thing. Canvas is constantly being changed, and that's great. But we also have to kind of navigate it, and that's okay. And so I feel if you're explicit about that, that's very comforting to the students. And it's always good to be candid about things that like we don't know as instructors and very humbling too. So that's kind of how I've worked around my own uh, uh, learning curve with Canvas. Finally, I think uh, a 